so on to the next thing. Let's look at our to-do list. This is actually also done. The next thing I want to tackle is to make this nice, to, to actually implement this nice uh, fancy stream context reporting that I sketched here. And I thought a bit about how to implement this. And the idea is that um, our stream abstraction will just support it will support collecting the nested contexts that we are in in an array of structs and all the fancy formatting will be centrally done in one function so i don't want to put because i'm not sure whether i ultimately i will like these kind of errors and and what we designed here so i'm not sure if i always will like this fancy kind of printing stuff so the actual stream implementations will just fill out an array of structs giving the context information and then there will be a function that formats this for human consumption. So we can localize all these fancy formatting in one function. And if we decide to change it later, it's no problem. And also if we, for example, maybe we want to keep this for the command line, but we want to have something else in a GUI. So what I'm thinking about is, let's write it down as a, as a structure right away. have something like and and I'm not I don't mind a long name here because this is something quite specific that is only used for error reporting and debugging so we will pro probably have something like a def value for the depth in the nested uh, context stack the reason why I want to have this explicitly is because sometimes we might have the situation that we do not fill out all the levels. So we probably want to know the depth. And then <clears throat> every level will have a sixty four bit start and end position, right? So let's call it offset start and end offset, I guess, something like that. The question is, do we also want to specify the absence of an offset? I mean, I guess we could do signed values and and reserve minus one as unknown start or end do something like that then we will have a i first i will write it as a character pointer but this will this will change so we will have a title string and we will have a description string. And the idea is, if we look at our design here, that this part in, in the beginning is the title string. That's, that's a rather short string. And then things like this, additional details will be in the description string. Um, and this will also be a description string here. And we, we will distinguish two cases we will distinguish uh, streams that 
So contexts that define the, a new coordinate system in the stream that start to count from byte zero again and contexts that don't. So for this we will need some kind of, of flags. Um, for example, let's, let's put some flags here. And maybe we could have some some nested flags class inside here, maybe. I don't know if that is nice. And we could have a flag for defines address space or should we call it define offset space? Not to con. Hmm. Yeah, something like that. So if this flag is set, it means that this this stream does not have a so we should actually, let's document this here. It means this stream context does not have a one-to-one -one relation or the bytes, the bytes in this, the bytes in this stream context do not have a one-to-one -one relation to the bytes in the next most underlying stream context. Rather, this context um, defines a new address space a new stream address space, let's say stream address space starting at position zero. That's a very strange <laughs> choice of words. I don't know if this is understandable. Anyway, if, if we have this flag set, this will affect the way we, we display the context to the, to the user. So for example, this, the file would be one of, the file actually is the outermost stream. So it definitely uh, defines an address space. So this would have either the flag set or the flag implicitly, the flag implied. Um, and then we could have something like a compressed stream that does not have a one-to-one -one relation with the bytes in the underlying streams. And this would also set, so, um, so if we have a deflate stream, for example, then we would have another, well, let's say in compressed stream, and we would have something like uh, deflated data, and this would start again. This would start again an address space that uh, starts with byte zero, which would be the first, the first deflated byte uh, that is uncompressed from whatever. Um, we have as the next outer context. So that's the idea of this of this flag. And I think I think that's basically it what we need. So this structure will be filled out. 
However, one, one thing I want to talk about is these character pointers. As we don't have a primitive string type and I don't count standard string here as, as a primitive string type. So if we don't use something like that, the question is always, what does a character pointer mean? Who owns the data that is pointed to? Who will free it? Does it need freeing at all? And so on. And also um, character pointers are quite wasteful. I mean, the pointers themselves are 64 bits, which is quite a lot. But that's not the worst thing. The worst thing is if all these little strings that we will have um, are allocated separately on the heap, that wastes quite a lot of heap over uh, allocation overhead and so on. And also we need to free and allocate all of them separately, which is a pain. And if it was only for this data stream context, I wouldn't care so much about it, but I think this is something that uh, in this code base, for the, which is going to be for a large project, uh, this will happen again and again, that we have this case that we have potentially a lot of little strings uh, belonging to the same data structure that we do not want to separately allocate from the heap. And, <clears throat> and so what I'm thinking about is the following, that these would actually be signed 32-bit integers and they would be kind of handles and that we would have an accompanying data structure that is something like a, stream collect a string collector that is like a string builder but you know a string builder is a concept that occurs often you have this concept of a string builder that is an object that helps you to um, assemble a string out of little pieces and, and do that with efficient memory allocation and so on. And I think I want to have something like this, but for a collection of strings. And I want to be able to easily fill out a data structure that has lots of little strings in it, treat them almost like they would be primitive uh, data types and then also to, to free all these strings in, in one step uh, when I'm done with the data structure. So let's just sketch this right here and we can later move this somewhere else if we, if we like. So I want to have something like a, um, like a string collector and have some nice functions to deal with that. And the very minimum I want to have is I want to do something like a like an sprintf I want to do an sprintf. Uh, first argument will be the string collector itself. And so I just want to be able to print something and get back a handle into the string collector. And using, using this handle, I want to be able to get back the string. So how would we call this string collector get maybe just that.
So question is just, the problem is how do we do error handling and, and memory allocation? So the string collector should know about its own memory allocation, but in, in my coding style, I always have this, I always pass down the memory manager to functions that can do allocation. And the question is, do we stuff it into the string collector when we initialize it? I mean, this will actually be an abstract interface and we, we, will, we will have some potentially different implementation of, of this abstract interface. And the question is, do we When do we actually handle errors and, and how do we handle errors upon get? So if we pass an inverted handle, do we just return null pointer and, and make all our users or not null pointer, probably something safe that is um, that is a valid a valid character pointer, um, but that, that tells that we have an invalid handle. Do we just do that? Probably. Yeah, I think that's. We don't. We won't. We won't have other error cases here, and we then we can always safely use the character pointer. So this will always return a, a valid character pointer. And we might have something like, we might have something like extern character pointer String collector invalid handle. So we we will have a, a known return value that corresponds to an invalid handle. So if we want to check, we want to check before printing something. So. Actually, this is not a good name because it's not a handle itself. So I call it invert string. I'm, I'm not sure. or null string or no string. I don't know, whatever. So that, that, is, that is quite nice, a very simple interface here. Here is the question because this can cause allocations. Do we let the string collector deal with all that? And, and make the caller check the string collector at the end? Or do we report the error right now? I 
That's a difficult design question. I'm somehow leaning towards making the string collector deal with allocation and errors and report them maybe afterwards when the caller checks. And just return just return invalid handles here if there's a problem. So we could have something like something like invalid handle or something like error handle that could be for example in nim or, or something like that Hmm. Yeah, but uh, let's let's just do it in some way, and we will see how how good we feel about that. The other thing I maybe want to do so for an S print F, we would probably want to have here and for kind of an S N print F where we can specify the the width of the buffer that we want to print to. This we won't have for the string collector, so it will deal with it by itself to make this safe and everything. What we might what we might want to have is kind of different columns that have different width specifications or something like that. So we might want to specify kind of which which field or column we are in. Maybe we should call it field. And this would be mostly an opaque value that that the implementation decides how to use. That would be my idea. So that would be the minimum the minimum interface. Actually, we need another thing. Uh, we need something to release to release the memory. And I, I don't yet have a good naming convention for functions that do that, but I'm, I'm trying out to call them done to, to go with init. So we have an init function that acquires resources and then we have a done function that releases resources, but not the thing itself. So it's not called a free function because it does not release the memory pointed to by the string collector pointer itself. It just releases um, things hanging off that thing. So that would be the abstract interface and then we would have an implementation of this interface like I don't know what, what should we call it let's call it for now a basic string collector and that would implement this interface we will also need some some function pointers here then and for this we would have an, an init function definitely uh, this would definitely also get the status and, and memory 
objects, so the memory handler and the status um, object for error reporting. Yeah, I think that would be probably the only visible, the only visible, publicly visible function of this implementation. Everything else would be handled by the abstract interface. And these functions, they would actually use function pointers inside here. We actually could think about putting a type tabs for the functions right inside here. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. <clears throat> For example, we would have a we would have an s printf function. That would just have this interface. And this would, I mean, this would just be a wrapper for that, right? Because I, I don't, I, I think I don't want user code, I don't want user code to, to have to deal with this function pointer stuff because I might change that. And so, oh, actually that means that means that I cannot have the same interface here. I need, I need a, a VA list. So this would be something like a, a VS printf function. And this would get a VA list passed in here. So here we would do the dance with the VA list and have a VA start and VA end. And actually we don't probably don't need the end. We can, I think the end usually doesn't do anything anyway, does it? Maybe something for debugging. Yeah, maybe something like this we should, sorry, what did I do? Maybe some, something like this we should actually put inside as a static cons expression. Also this one. Let's see if this if this works. So we print so get yeah for this we we certainly also need a we need a 
function pointer. And also for this one. I mean, I'm not too happy about code like this because it's really trivial, it doesn't do anything except delegate. That's actually exactly the kind of object-oriented, trivial, unproductive code that I don't like. I'm not so happy about that. I mean, the only purpose of this, this code is kind of an encapsulation. I'm not sure if I, I, want, to, I want that. Maybe users of the interface should just call the interface functions. I'm not sure if I like this style. I mean, the thing is, I could see immediately getting rid of, of those two. For the S print F, the thing is, whenever you have something with variable arguments, you usually want one version with the variable arguments and one version with the VA list. And I definitely don't want two function pointers for them. because they just do the same thing. It's just a different interface for calling them. And you often, you often need the V version if you want to wrap something around that. Um, so you usually end up having two versions, but I only want one function pointer. So this wrapper is kind of a little bit non-trivial. Or, or, so this, it's good to have this wrapper. But about these ones, these are really just, just cosmetic stuff. I'm not yet sure should we have trivial wrappers like this one at all? I'm not sure about that something I tend to avoid. But I'm, I'm still prototyping the new coding style I'm using here. So I'm not yet decided about all of these things. But let's get on with the work. Let's get something to work. So, um, Let's implement the basic string collector. Something that this will need is a kind of block structure. Probably something like, um, like a single single linked list or so. So my idea is that this will allocate 
memory in blocks and when one block is exhausted it will allocate the next block or something like that so something very simple um, and it will have character data here The question is always how whether this is whether this is supported or this is supported. I never remember exactly how this works. I always get it to work somehow, but so character data will be there. We will also We will also need something like yeah something like the number of allocated and the number of used bytes. And probably we, we really want 32 here. Yeah, something like that. So let's see what we can do with that. Yeah, still not sure about the indentation issue. And still not sure about namespaces at all. I'm not happy. I'm not happy with the C namespaces, how they are affecting my coding currently. And for a function like this one, I really would need a, a namespace. I think that is pretty unique anyway. So what we also want to do here is to, to remember status and memory. Sorry. By the way, I, <clears throat> I ordered some keyboards now because I really want to get rid of, uh, or not get rid of, I want to get away from my very unergonomic notebook setup here. I'm also curious to see what this will do to my typing. So, We will want to um, to remember the status and the memory objects. <clears throat> we will want to allocate a block. So Let's put some implementation details here.
Oh, actually, I will have to do something that is a bit stupid here, probably, because of the macro usage. And then I will have to do something like this. Um, So, in this case, what do we do if we fail? We probably need to set the whole string collector to some kind of emergency state. Probably what we do in this case is something like that we set the current block to be a null pointer to signal that we don't have we don't have a block available at the current time. Otherwise what we do is if we have a current block Then we chain the blocks. So if we have a current block, otherwise, this is our first block. The only thing is, I mean, if we ran into the problem before with the allocation, then we have a first block. We have a first block and we don't have a current block. That's kind of our emergency state. So maybe we should, we should leave immediately if we have this emergency situation. is in failure state. At the beginning, if we fail to allocate the first block, we would, would, we would remain at null now. And then we would try again. But then of, at least we are sure that we do not have to, we do not have to free anything. So the done function that that gets rid of stuff would be quite simple. So let's assert that we have this pointer here. 
And then let's let's say while we have a next block. So we set next point and then we free a memory free sized. We free the current block and the size that we free is okay. Here we should we should do the same calculation as here, but in order to in order to not in order to have a single definition for that. I will make here a static uh, static function Something like that. And here we will actually use this function. So block size given data size. And we can reuse this function here. Actually, we could do something like current size, right? And current and allocated. This means this actually will need mem yeah this memory we have here. I'm not completely sure about storing the memory manager, but it also wouldn't make sense to change the to, to switch the memory manager while using the string collector, so Maybe storing it is fine. Okay, and then at the end, I always reset my pointers. So we do not double free accidentally. So let's keep this simple and just zero everything at the beginning and then we call the then we call the allocator and this can actually fail so It does, doesn't really matter because it's at the end of the function. I'm not sure whether I want to have specific conventions for, for handling that. Because all that I do now is actually not strictly necessary. I could also just do XX here because it's the same. That's not strictly necessary. That's just a convention that I use. I'm still developing these kind of conventions. So what else do we need? We do need the, the printing function.
the VS printf. So if we, if we are in the failed state, then we will re immediately return the null handle, or what's it called, error handle. We cannot do anything else. So now we can actually assert that we have a current block because the other case that we have both both being zero actually here is easier it's easier because we we know that the initializer already has run so we don't have to distinguish so between the case that we have both zero. So just if we don't have a current block, then we, we exit immediately. Uh, now let's calculate how, how many bytes we still have available. So that is current block and allocated minus current block used. Ah, we should, of course, we did not initialize the block. Yeah, something we want to assert, I think, is that the data size will be at least two, because we will see later, otherwise we get problems. <clears throat> So we got the new block successfully. Uh, we remember how much data we allocated. We set the n used to one for the following reason, because we will always put we will always put the terminating zero in the first byte, I think. Because I thought about something, I thought about a case where I could, I could use that. So we know how many bytes we still have available. And then we probably do a VSN printf. We do a VSN printf. So that's the pointer, then we have n bytes available, format and VL. So if, if result is negative, this means something went wrong in the printing. Um, 
let's see if we can get from a standard library do we have already something in status for that for failing with a standard library somewhere i implemented this i think was this in a different was this for the where am i too somewhere i used error number Yeah, maybe this one. Is this the only one? Okay, here I'm, I'm getting lots of the third party code here. Probably want something like that. Not sure if we should use a better interface here, but <laughs> so that was the one case where we really have. In, that, that should normally never happen, only if you have an inverted format or something. Otherwise, we can have the, the if result is greater than or equal, so then we can actually cast result to unsigned. And if this is greater than or equal anyway, then we have the case that we did not have enough we did not have enough space for printing the string. We need to allocate a new block that has at least that many, at least one plus that many bytes yeah we probably should also have something like a standard block size that we can set somewhere I don't know something like that
And now we actually, we, we just, I mean, we just repeat the printing, right? We could just do something, we could just loop here. We could just loop here and to be safe, check that we don't loop too often. Something like that. And here we will, will actually say if it is smaller, so we will break. And this must only happen in the first iteration, otherwise we have an internal problem. Okay, then we continue. A second time we should definitely hit that one. What we should do here is we should increment the used we should increment the used count And we should set we should set the handle that we return. Okay, this is this is another for this we will need an additional data member. So let's get this thing running. Actually I just discovered that I I want to have an even simpler version of the string collector. It uses just a single memory block, a pre-allocated single memory block for error reporting and so on. But <clears throat> let's first get this one running. So something that we also will need is is the total <clears throat> total number of used um, bytes. We will need that to generate the handles. So this is initialized to zero at the beginning. And We will use it here to to generate uh, the handle. We will also make sure that we don't overflow here. So if
if the result would be so big that um, if the result would be so big <coughs> that we go beyond in 32 max after adding it to and total used then we will say okay that's too much Um, so here we will actually say that the handle is the number of total used bytes that we had before. Okay, maybe we should maybe we should also do that already here. Actually also afterwards we we do want to have this condition. So if we ever get here, we have a problem. So we will never get here. Okay, that's uh, that's the printing so far. So we need the get function. So if handle is negative, we will return the invalid string or the null string. Yeah. If handle is too large, so it's definitely too large 
if it is beyond the total used. So let's actually do that here. Okay, so it the handle is the index of a is the index of a byte we used. So we can safely cast to unsigned. Now, Uh, while we have a next block and while the offset is beyond what is in this block We go to the next block. So this makes sure that it's still non-negative. We go to the next block. We should never run out of blocks this way because of this check here that the total used is not exceeded. Let's call, let's not call this next, let's call this block. So if we come here, we actually know that offset is less than less than what is used in the block. <clears throat> so we can assemble a character pointer that is block data plus the offset. Actually, another thing we will check is that if offset happens to be zero, we will also return the null string because that's one reason why I always wanted to have the term integer zero at the beginning of the block because now we will make a simple a simple check. So offset is at least one, so we can dereference pointer minus one. And if pointer minus one is is not, not not a null, we are somewhere in the middle of a string, and we will also return null string. I don't know if, if this check is strictly necessary because probably nothing bad would happen if we just, if we get such a kind of invalid handle, we just return some data, but
I'm feeling more comfortable this way, I think. Okay, so that's the way how we make a character pointer from an offset. It's not terribly efficient, but yeah, this is not, so far the string collector is not really meant for, not really meant for highly efficient access. It's more for convenience and for keeping the memory compact. And the number of blocks should be low. So, so this should be quite fast. And also the number of strings used should typically be low because those will typically be strings that we present for human consumption. So the number should be low. So let's set the function pointers. Those are the function pointers. Could this thing already work or did we forget something? Let's make a little test. Actually, we should here have a test randomized with memory because we need we need memory. Ah, we, we still one thing we don't yet have yet is basic string collector needs this minimum minimum data size let's just set this to something reasonable and let's use it here as the size something like that so that we typically end up with 4K per block. Just as a reasonable starting point. We should maybe make this um, 
configurable here. So this should look like the following that we pass some field number and then we just do a printf and afterwards we can just simply extract this So we get SC. Okay, here we should uh, we should expect okay ST. So the status should be okay. We get handle one. Um, So do I do I already have expect EQ for a string? No, not yet. But I can I can say I expect string compare to be zero. Uh, so let's let's use an, some invalid handles. String collector get minus one should be string collector null string. Same with zero. And same with something that is very large. or even extremely large. So let's fix all of our syntax errors. Okay, this is not yet in this version of the standard that we use. So we will simply do this stupid hack. So probably probably a namespace problem here, right?
Yeah, we are not using memory namespace. Not sure whether I should be using it. I'm really not happy with how these how these namespace things are turning out here. Maybe I will just get rid of all the namespaces. So string error number, is this in, so where are we? Is this in standard lib or in error no? I guess it's in standard lib, right? No. Is this in error no? No, but why, what? String error no? Why? How did that? <laughs> Where does string error no come from? Did I type this? Where are we here? Oh, this third party ignore this did not work. Where are we here? I, ty I typed this bogus name, it seems. I didn't, I didn't notice that. So, and total used, is it called and used total? Yeah. Okay, we are at the warnings. We have a mismatch here because this is signed. So let us, so signed, a result is definitely non-negative. So let's do everything in unsigned. Here, the same here, I guess. Actually, this one, we should probably do something like this, right? Oh, this is ugly. No, I think I think I prefer, I think I prefer that. It's stupid, but I mean, for a 32 bit int, we wouldn't even need because the, the, it would be promoted to unsigned int. Yeah, here we need to pass the data size, of course. Do we have any more missing touch uh, test generalized with memory? I think that is in 
in test u2 probably namespace test right ah oh, these namespaces they sound like a great idea at first but in the end i don't know Okay. Fail. We failed. Yeah, one thing is that we did not free. Okay, that's a problem of my unit test. So our nice memory debugging system that we already develop on the stream tells us exactly that we that we are leaking. We are leaking a basic string collector block with data size such and such. Very nice. Mm. But also uh, the rest of our code is not working because the string comparison does not work. So let's actually, I want to, I want to have macros for convenience string testing. Oh, I already have them. Do I already have them? Even better. So one thing we should fix is that we add the free call here. So we should be done with our allocator, uh, our string collector. And the other thing is I should use string equal here. So then we will actually see what what is the problem. Oh no, string collector done is what we what we want. This is part of the abstract interface that done. Okay, we get a null string and our, oh, I think why we crash. I forgot one thing. I forgot an, a very important thing. When we initialize the new block, we must set the next pointer to zero. That's probably the reason why done is crashing. Yeah, that was the reason. So we get the null string. Uh, let's first see the handle we get. What is the handle that we get? Because we actually know what to expect. We, we expect the handle to be one, which is the first valid handle that we get from the, from the string collector. Okay, we get back zero. Oh, I think I know, I know, I forgot another thing. Good that I remember, because here we said n used to one. That means we should also increment the n used total. I will do it like this, so I could also, I could just increment it by one, but I think this is cleaner because this documents, we need to increment that because that is not zero. 
we always use up a byte when we add a block in order to have this terminating zero before the first string. We are passing. So let's let's stress this some more. Let's add a second string. Uh, let's make this an empty string. Now, I'm not sure how much to test here because, I mean, the handles we get is, those are really an implementation detail, right? So, I could expect something particular in particular here, but I mean, even that, we shouldn't really, shouldn't really, um, The one thing we could maybe check that it's not negative. For uh, Something like a black box test, we shouldn't assume more than that, actually. So let's first let the test fail. Yeah, this is what I wanted to see. And I mean, it's not what I wanted to see, but I wanted to see what we actually get. So we do get the null string. We should get... We should get an empty string. So what would we expect? We would expect, so this is at offset one, two, three, four, five, six for the, for the 42, seven is the terminating zero of this string and eight should be what we expect here. It's seven. It is seven. Time to do some debugging. So what do we want to look at CPP? Oh, we are in the wrong. Why are we in the wrong directory? Oh, now we are in the right one. So The first one is working, but let's step through quickly. So what is the result we get here? It's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, this does not include the terminating zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Trap for new players, so let's say. 
try for young players so how is this called um A number of characters not counting the yeah that is so mean that, that the standard library is so inconsistent in whether it counts the terminating zero or not that's really an evil trap so v as an print f This is still okay. Here we already so we should check here minus one. Uh, this is okay because if it is exactly equal to n avail then the terminating zero exactly concluded exactly concluded the block but this one and this one need the plus one this one data size one plus result these actually need a plus two so one uh, for leading null plus one for terminating null Uh, let's put this here maybe so we explain the two here Okay, we still have the file open in Remedy. And you see now, actually our check for the terminating null helped, I think, because this was, yeah, now it's fine. Now that we get the empty string. Because this was the check, the check that, that tested whether the previous character was a terminating null, this, this is the check that found this problem. So you see it sometimes it's good to, to put in things like that. Yeah, working. Now, uh, 
Actually, what I did not discuss yet is we probably want the string corrector to be, to be null, bit, uh, null byte safe so that we could also put uh, null bytes uh, within strings. That makes the check for the preceding null byte not totally re reliable, but I can live with that, I think. Uh, let's just try if we can, if we actually can put something in the string collector that has in, an embedded um, null byte. So let's get rid of that again. So that's handle three. Let's put something afterwards. So we know that this does not override. Uh, let's also use the same field number here, or let's maybe go back to an early one. So let's get, sorry. Let's get handle three. And yeah, string EQ will only say it's bar, but we should be able to do a mem compare. And that should be, that should work, I hope. Oh no, it won't work like this because in this case, the VSN printf will actually terminate. But we could, hmm. There is a way to, yeah, there is a way to do it. So like this, it won't work. So now we will have, yeah, now it doesn't work. But we can actually use a printf escape sequence here to make the sprintf generate the zero byte. That should, that should give us what we want. Ah, uh, okay. This is not done by, this is not done by sprintf. This is done by, by the C compiler. This. So we, we need to do it differently. We need to do something like put the character here and the character will be null, right? That should work. I hope. Yeah, that works. So um, Okay, and now let's stress the thing a bit. Let's stress this thing. Let's print 
say 10,000 numbers. And then let's read them out. Let's read them out. Oh, yeah, of course. Now, now this one that asks for 1000, of course, this actually gives back something. We were just lucky to hit exactly the, the beginning of a string, it seems. We pass. And now I actually want to see this in the debugger. Um, I want to check if everything looks all right. So let's go until here. Okay, we have a problem here. We have a problem here. This could be a problem with Remedy Debugger that maybe we need this debug full Because I think the, the problem is we have this fast link option probably going on. So far, so zero computation parts into the same. Yeah, we want this one. Is this a linker option? Yeah, that's a linker option. What is that? What was? Oh, this is because I'm in a terminal. Okay. Strange. I never saw something like that. Uh, 
What was that? Was this a, a room function? No, that's really a function of the terminal. Hey, I never knew. I never knew that that existed. I mean, I, I knew F3, but F7, wow. <laughs> that's so funny that I never used this. That's funny. So what, what did I want to check? Ah, I wanted to check if Remedy is working now, right. Is it working now? No. Did it not relink? Let's check how our so this is used debug full incremental no so that shouldn't be a problem anymore yeah now it's working that solved the problem so somehow it was not completely relinked it seems so let's look at our nice string collector it has multiple blocks as expected it uses about 50k so let's look at the first block yeah that sounds nice let's send this to memory yeah this looks nice zero one two three four five six seven always with the terminating zeros in between so how many how many do fit in the first block Okay, since we have debug info, we did not succeed in making this exactly 4K, this jump, but it's close. Due to the debug build, it's, we have the sentinels going on. And actually, we, sh we should see the sentinels here, or the, the guard bytes, or whatever you call them. We should see a break, a break in this pattern. So, we have here four bytes, per, so we should get roughly to 1000, right? So we have here uh, zero and then one zero terminating zero three three so three bytes and then we have the guard bytes probably okay they start here. Now let's make this 16 columns. So 
so we should have I think 16 guard bytes from our own and then we have the four from the Microsoft debug library so this could be but that's too much Do we have even more than that? So we, sh we see a partial print here, run zero, and then it broke off. I'm just wondering about the exact point. I mean, it, it looks okay because here we then, here we have the next block that starts with 1030. That looks fine. I just want to be sure that I understand the exact point at which at which we switch to the new block. Let's see how many guard bytes we currently are using. Two times you int 64 that are that 16 16 bytes so we have the the four from the microsoft debug library and then 16 so we should be here so it seems we are not using we are not using something like seven seven bytes at the end let's calculate how far we locate it so the data starts at this address and we allocate it 4065 a741 yeah that's exactly up to here so that's that's consistent the sprintf put exactly the terminating zero here and that's consistent I'm just wondering why we allocated this number of bytes why this is such an odd number let's see again how do we calculate this log size is calculated by this one size of block minus size of data this should be this one but this should be 16 actually so I don't see
this should be 16. So let's look at the data size that we specify for the first block. Oh, I see. This is probably wrong. We need something like that. That's probably the, the problem. Yeah, the problem is that here I couldn't really... Oh, is it? Did, the, did this decay to a point or two? Now we still have, so this, this was actually okay. So it did not decay to a point or to the element, the first element. That's fine. There's something else wrong here. The problem is, I don't know if remedy, will be able to do that. No. It's not able. I can it even do size of int? Yeah, I can. But I think remedy does not understand qualified. Does not understand any qualified names. That's a bug currently. How do we get this this very odd number here? Uh, maybe due to some padding, probably the block, the block is padded. Yeah, probably we have some padding going on. That's probably the case. So we probably can get get rid of our problem when we do that because then we have everything in eight bytes eight bytes so eight bytes eight bytes eight bytes byte, yeah we probably even even more aligned is that and that probably gets rid of this problem but that's stupid. I mean, we should really be able to put the zero size there. I think you can do that in C99, right? That you put the unspecified size there. Okay, but this, what is going on?
Why is Remedy not working? Again, it has a problem with that. No. Sorry, people. <laughs> I cannot show you my finances that I accidentally started and it in GNU Cash takes forever to start. So we must wait until I can close it again. This software is so slow. Okay, we are safe again here. So it seems that again. Again, we had the problem that something was not cleanly rebuilt and Remedy always has problems when we do not cleanly rebuild executables. That's a bit strange. Yeah, so uh, I mean Remedy is still a bit rough around the edges. It needs a lot of work to get really to become a smooth experience to use it. And now it's working again. Yeah, strange. Strange, strange, strange. Yeah, now it's looking better. So let's send the first block to the memory view. Looks good. So 1031, zero, zero, and then, yeah, now we, now we make full use, now we make full use, of the allocated block. However, the alignment is still funny, but maybe that's due to the debug build putting something at the beginning or not. First block starts at five. No, it's actually aligned here. So it's aligned here to 16 and it's only aligned to 8 at the end. That's the block point, but then we have the most used. And then we start with the first data here. Okay, and this is still there's something I'm not fully understanding. So why is this? This should be exactly 16. Do we still have some kind of padding going on?
I would expect to get something that is divisible by 16 now. With 8 and 2 times 4, this is 16 and 16, so we should get 32. Let's just print the size of this stupid thing. And then let's print Oh yeah, it's because of this minus eight here, I guess, right? Because this is trying to compens this is trying to compensate for the heap allocator over overhead. Which might be typically eight or sixteen. If this is okay, this explains it actually, yeah. Yeah, I, I meant set you. This compilation is taking so much of my time. I hate that. So, yeah, that looks nice. Mm -hmm. Now it's working. It's just this minus eight that is maybe a bit stupid. I don't know, maybe we should do minus 16. It doesn't matter much anyway, probably. Just would be nice to get exactly the 4K. So people, this string allocator is working. Let's just stress it a bit more, even more. Uh, so let's first, let's crank this up and let's inject some really large strings in the middle. So So let's just generate a very long string. What do we want to put there? Mm. 
Actually, actually, no. So both both point uh, uh, and left. So here we don't need the plus one because we want to concatenate. We don't want to do this in every block. Let's, for example, let's do it every every seven thousand and one. Then we do this whole dance. We add this huge string and so let's first fail miserably because we do not expect the right strings in the end. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to see that uh, that these strings are generated correctly. Yeah, looks good. We have two of them. Everything else is passing still. That's nice. So all we need to do is now to generate the correct expectation here. So we will actually say, I do this now in a very unclean way, but in a test, I don't care really. Yeah. 
We pass. We stress the thing and we passed. So let's again look at it in the debugger just to be sure that everything is sane. Do we still oh our breakpoint is probably no longer valid? Ah, uh, it has again the why? I don't know why this rebuilding is necessary. That is a bit annoying so the first block should look the same yeah the numbers are a bit different because we have now the minus 16 that's fine the next block yeah still has no large strings looks very similar next block still similar wow how many blocks do we we have lots of blocks now yeah now we have the the large one here so here we have a block that is not well used of course i mean this one is well used but Yeah, it, it it tried it tried to fill it, and there wasn't enough space, of course. So it has not a large used count here. Only used fourteen hundred thirty-one. The next one is a large one that has only a single string, right? So this one sent to memory. Yeah, this one has only, should only have a single string inside, a very large one. So what the string collector currently doesn't do what the smart string builder might do but the string collector here is really not for building large strings it's building lots of small lots of small strings if we would have something that is for building large strings um, then it would maybe make sense to first uh, collect everything in blocks and at the end uh, consolidate it into a one large string at the end. But then maybe, I mean, if you build strings that are so large, then it actually makes sense to think about maybe, maybe it's fine in the end to not have everything as one contiguous array. Uh, you could also have it as, um, as a chain of blocks that you just, when you consume them, uh, collect again, if you, know what I, if you know what I mean. So we have lots of blocks here. So we are stressing this thing a bit. That's nice. Um, let's see how many do we have. Okay, that was the last one. So quite a number of blocks. This will, of course, will make the linear search rather slow. So in the end, our search here is getting uh, quadratic because the, the number of blocks grows linearly, which we could change. So we could 
we could have a logarithmic uh, growth if we increase the the size of the blocks that we allocate this is maybe something to consider in the future so uh, let's make a note of this <clears throat> I don't know where this is best to maybe here. We might consider uh, a geometric series. Is it you? Geometric series, yeah. In order to, let's say, make the number of allocated blocks logarithmic in n used total. This is something we could consider, but I really don't intend to build such large data with this collector. So actually, actually I do want, I do want to also have a fixed fixed block allocator i don't know if i should do it with the same class let's just let's say um, we could do it just by setting min data size to zero as a signal that we shouldn't allocate or maybe just passing in memory is zero to have a, a, a separate init function um, that has no memory. Yeah, let's do that. So let's say we have an init, init pre-allocated. In this case, we cannot fail, that's nice. So we pass just this and the character pointer to a buffer and we have a buffer size. This is the same. Ah, okay. We need to We need to check whether that is okay. Actually, yeah, this is zero. Yeah, this is zero. The functions will be the same. Oh, okay, I need, I need a block to use here. And I think that would be probably, yeah, we will just put it, should we put it at the beginning? And then again, we have the alignment. Ah. I mean, we could just pretend that alignment is not an issue, which it 
typically isn't on, on x64. And usually, I mean, if we allocate this, I mean, this could be, of course, we could call this a pointer to a basic string collector block. But the problem is that it's a variable size data structure, so that doesn't really work that well. It's actually also character pointer is misleading because there will also be the block data there. So what we definitely need to assert is that uh, buff size is at least at least the size we need to store. It's let's say two bytes because two I think is the we need at least two because we have the leading and the terminating zero. So that's the minimum, the minimum we need. Okay, and now we must calculate the size in reverse. That's actually we can also use here. So we have initialized everything in the block. Mem is set to zero. We cannot actually fail in this case. That's kind of the point of having everything pre-allocated. So we could actually set the done function just to, to null pointer. and make this check. So to call this only if there is a non-zero done function. So this wrapper is then no longer completely trivial. So we don't need done because we never need to free anything. Get works just as it always does. Although it, I mean, get could be much, much simpler, but that's, yeah. And here, we just need to make sure so done will not be done will not be used. So here we make sure that this is never called with mem zero.
So if a pre-allocated one overflows we will just return the error handle right should we should we consider that a fault i don't know the the point is I don't want to treat it as a, as a failure because the context of this will often be in error handling, that this is used in error handling, especially the pre-allocated version. And there in error handling, I typically do not want to create additional errors. The worst thing that can come from this is that we have this null string tag appearing in error messages and so on. So we won't have crashes because of that. So this string collector is pre -alloc using a pre allocated buffer that has been exhausted. We cannot do much in this case. We choose not to raise a failure uh, because Okay, so then we can never reach this for the pre-allocated version. So let's add some test tests for the pre-allocated version. Uh, let's copy this. Pre-allocated. Oh, I still need to make the prototype, of course, but so let's make this something twelve thousand bytes. Just for trying this out. Let's just see what happens. So we will of course get errors because this will overflow. So we have this init function Pre-allocated, yeah, there it is. A hail to line completion. I need to get some tea. Oh, the data size function, we don't have that implemented. So that's the that's actually the reverse of the size so we will simply transform this equation so
so um, let's subtract a size of block from both sides. Let's add size of data to both sides. And that's it, right? That's it. Okay. Oh yeah, this is 16 bit. Yeah, with these small numbers, it certainly will not become a problem. Yeah, here it could be. Here it could be so I think actually this is the maximum we want to allow the signed one, right? Because we anyway we um for the handles, we cannot use the full unsigned range. Anyway, we will be far, far, far below this limit in all, to, in all use cases. Why is what? Oh. It's here also, right? No. Okay. Hmm. We should actually make, should actually do it like this, right? Just make sure not to not to pass anything too large here. Or should we make this thirty two bit? Because I, I chose that because that is convenient. That is convenient for passing to memory allocation functions to take the 64. Annoying, annoying type, type mess. Okay, still remedy is running.
yeah, lots of failures, of course, because we are getting. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm red. Um, I'm not catching the Ctrl C. Maybe I should. Uh, we we are expecting something unrealistic, namely that the pre-allocated buffer can deal with all this stuff. So this is of course failing like crazy. So we should uh, have something like this here or h equals string collector error handle. So, yeah, just to make this work for now. This we can always expect actually. So if it is a handle, then we expect that we get back the null string thing. I don't know how to reset the colors here. Is there something like reset? No. What is this reset actually? Okay. Whatever. We can make a new one. Oh, we are already getting, that's not right. The first one should, should work. The first ones should work. We should later check, have an expectation here when we should start to get the overflow so why does the first one not work ah this is also something that st where do we so this is not This is, <clears throat> so here we always need an, a status object. Uh, here, uh, where is the first time that we actually use that? Okay. Mm -hmm. So what do we do?
Yeah, if, if we don't have an, a status object, we simply return the error handle. Let's put a warning here. But otherwise, oh, we don't set the current block ever. That's the problem. That was the problem. But anyway, good that I, I saw my note to check the ST, the status being, status object being absent. That was also important. Yeah, we have, okay, I'm not sure what is exactly going on. So now, It seems the adding works now, but the getting does not. Is there something wrong? Yeah, I guess again, again, the same, the same part we already had. Probably that we are generating invalid handles because of that. Yeah, now it is fine. So let's see where we get the first, where we get the first invalid handle. If we have the error handle, and i is not zero, let's do it like this. If we have the error handle. So we don't want i equals zero. If it is the first time that we get this situation, so if handles i minus one is not the error handle, then we set uh, first, first error handle at i.
2614. Is this something that we would roughly expect? We roughly need five bytes per number of the numbers that we are printing here. Is it five? Yeah, roughly five. No, um, the other way around. We have 12,000 bytes. Yeah, so that's about what we expect. That seems reasonable. If you want to know it, more precisely we have I mean first we have some, a few things but then we have nine times two bytes then Then 90 times 3 bytes, then 900 times 4 bytes, then this many times 5. Okay, this is already too much. And then we have five bytes for the remaining ones. And so we would expect 2600. Yeah, that's that's nice. We have a bit less because because previously we, we fill we put some strings in there. So uh, let's just um, Let's just put it into some, some bounds. Let's say we expect it between 2000 and, and 3000. And let's see here if I So we are more sensitive in our testing. Okay, passed. That is nice. We have a nice string collector working in both versions, pre-allocated and dynamically allocated. It's nice. Let's just check a few other things. So that's kind of important that those are correctly set to zero. That is nice. Um, I mean, the question remains where to move this thing. There are also many ideas that you could add here. So currently the only way to construct this thing is this sprinter function. I think we will probably soon also want to have more a bit of a kind of little string building so that we can uh, build a string incrementally. 
uh, we will want to add that but that's a good start So um, let's look at the notes we I made for the string collector. Yeah, we have this. We can store up to two gigabytes roughly in it. The one core builder interface is done. I thought about this incremental interface where you can open a field and assemble a string and then close the field or something like that. It's done. Okay, I think I will leave it at that. Uh, next task would be to actually use the string builder and to implement this context reporting stuff. That's the first use case for the string, build, uh, string collector. But otherwise, Uh, let's just run our tests again. So this stream is coming to an end. So if somebody is watching and has any questions, now is the time to quickly throw them into the chat. Otherwise, we will just wait for our tests to finish and we will conclude the stream. And just as a closing thought, I would like to say that uh, this kind of infrastructure work that we did here might seem maybe a bit boring and redundant. You might say, yeah, this has been done millions of times and so on. Why not use library XYZ for that? And the point is that, yes, I mean, you spend a bit of time doing redundant stuff this way, but it has many benefits so the price that you pay with this i mean also what i what i want to mention here is that the trade-off is different if you work on a very small program or on something that will become a very large code base if you work on a throwaway program that you only need one one day or uh, if you on a very small program that will be let's say uh, 1,000, 2,000 lines or so, then of course it does not pay to invest so much time in infrastructure. But um, the, pro the, the, the project that I have in mind here has the potential to become a, a million lines of code project. And in the scope of such a project, the time that we spend on this kind of infrastructure here is is totally negligible because we built this once and then we can use it in in hundreds of places in the code and it gets amortized really quickly and we have to, all the benefits of having our our own handmade code that we can um, that we can modify anytime we want that we completely understand because we did it ourselves that fits together with everything else and so on so this is really something to consider it, whether to use quickly use a library or a module from from the web that the trade-offs that you make really depend a lot on their on your projects so for example if i do throwaway scripts for example i will also use all kinds of modules from cpan or whatever just to get the thing done and and do it quickly uh, and then never think about it again. But 
um, it's different, even for a small program, it's different when you say, okay, I, I don't only want to use this today, but I this will be used for many years, for example. Uh, the trade-off is also different because then you have to consider the maintenance. And maintenance may get much, much harder if you incorporate a third-party code. So uh, th those are just uh, lots of engin engineering trade-offs that you, you have to um, consider. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching, if anybody is still here, and uh, see you next time. Bye.